My Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to open your word. I ask, Father, that you would forgive each and every one of us through the blood of Jesus as we gather here tonight. And Lord, we don't want to lift up or elevate the Antichrist any more than we have to, Lord, other than to just bring it out in Bible prophecy. So, Father, I pray that your Son would be glorified tonight rather than the Antichrist. I pray that the message we would leave with tonight is the hope in Jesus Christ and not the fear of the Antichrist. So, Father, tonight as we gather in your name, we ask that your Spirit would be here among us, with us, and in us. Teach us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a quick review, in case some of you here tonight were unable to make Saturday night. And also, that was a pretty big message, a lot of stuff to comprehend in one evening. So, just a short review here as we begin, so that we kind of get everybody caught up on one page. And it's okay if you weren't here, uh, please remember that we have materials in the back to catch up on. And we invite you to take those, not only for yourself, but maybe even for some friends as well, too. So we started on Saturday night by saying that there was a very important warning in Revelation 14. It said, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And we said that that was a very sincere warning and one we wanted to pay direct attention to. Then we went to Revelation 13 and we began reading verses 1 through 3 as it described this beast. Let's go ahead and turn there. Revelation chapter 13, as we have this quick review. Revelation chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Revelation 13, and verses 1 through 3. We read in the Bible, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his head is a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. And we said collectively that this was, it had to be a symbolic animal, not something we would find in the local zoo. And as we began to interpret these prophecies, these symbols, we found that in order to really understand this beast, we had to go back to Daniel chapter 7. And that's exactly what we did. We also said the beast in Revelation was what we call a composite beast. It was a beast that was made up of other animals. And when we went back to Daniel chapter 7, we found each one of those individual animals were listed there as well. And so as we moved down through that prophecy in Daniel 7, we also found that this was sort of a continuation or a deeper look into what the image was that we had studied the night before. We found that the, the uh, lion that came up was exactly the same as the golden head on that image. And we moved right down through there, through Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And each one, we saw that God was revealing even more intricacy in this prophecy. But then we got to something that was different, didn't we? We got to this little horn that was speaking blasphemous and great words against God. And we said if we could figure out who this little horn was, we would also know what the beast was in Revelation 13 we started with. So we went through very systematically, and from the Bible we got ten identifying points. And let me ask you, friends, did we get every one of those ten points from the Bible and the Bible alone? Yes, we did. We went down there very methodically, very slowly, and made sure that we were getting them from the Scripture and the Scripture alone. And so we found that there was only one power, only one thing in this world that could have met all ten of those identifying marks. And we said that it was the Vatican City, the Papacy, or Papal Rome, the Holy Catholic Church, that met all ten of those identifying marks. And we wanted to be very delicate at that point and make the point that God is not... Uh, bringing this out to condemn anybody, that he's more concerned about whether or not your name is written in the books in heaven rather than what denomination on earth. We said we're not saved by denomination, but rather our faith in Jesus Christ. 
And I believe there's many sincere people in many, di and in many different persuasions. So in, in no way are we saying tonight or trying to condemn somebody for where they may come from or a church that they may attend. Is that clear to everybody here tonight? Good. So the beast is not a person per se. It is a religious or political system that we need to watch out for as we look down through these prophecies. Now we begin to look at some of the writings of the reformers as they were reading the scriptures and praying about the things that they had read. And we found that John Wycliffe uh, came to some of the very similar conclusions that we did. We also looked at the writings of Martin Luther. And this one here always touches me very much. He says, Oh, how much pain it has caused me, though I had the scriptures on my side, that I should dare to make a stand alone against the Pope and hold him forth as Antichrist. T'was so I fought with myself and with Satan, till Christ, by his own infallible word, fortified my heart against these doubts. We also went on to say that this country was founded on the very principles of freedom because of the persecution that was coming from that church. They wanted to find a kingdom without a king and a religion without a pope. And so tonight, we want to continue on opening up some of these prophecies about the Antichrist because we're not done yet. There's some more things that the Bible has to say, even more identifying marks that we can look at. So let's continue on now, turning back to the book of Revelation. We want to continue on this path. Now, one of the most controversial things that you'll see and read as you go into different Christian bookstores, everybody talks about it, is the number 666. You know, whenever you say that or it comes up at the grocery store or you get a, something and it rings up to 666, everybody kind of, oh, that's bad, right? We don't want to see that. Well, it's very simple. As we turn to Revelation 13 and verse 18, this is where that number comes from. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18. The Bible says, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a what? Of a man. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people or read different clips on prophecy that they tried to apply this number to something that wasn't a man. This scripture is very clear that this is applying to a man. It also says that this is wisdom. Let him who has understanding make this calculation. And friends, as we've moved very methodically through this prophecy, I feel very sure tonight that we have understanding together of who this is. And the, the word calculate is a mathematical term. So since we have the understanding, we can then go through and calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. The scripture goes on to say his number is 666. Now, our Sunday visitor is a Catholic print, a magazine that's in print, and this is what they have to say. Catholics hold that the church, which is a visible society, must have a visible head. And it's no uh, mystery tonight that the Pope has always been the visible head of the church, has always been out there up front. And this is also taken from uh, one of the Catholic uh, magazines in print called Our Sunday Visitor. And this was written in a question-answer format. The question that came in said, what are the letters inscribed in the Pope's crown and what do they signify, if anything? The answer is, the letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are these vicarious filii dei, which is the Latin for vicar of the Son of God. And so here we get the official title, if you will, of the man who is at the head of this power. Now this is a picture of one of the crowns that uh, when they go through their, their coronation, they're crowned with. And it, I don't know how much it weighs, but it does look very heavy. And you can imagine why the Pope doesn't wear that all the time. It looks uh, extremely heavy. And so his official title, Vicarious Filii Dei, Vicar of the Son of God. So it's very simple. Remember that the term found in the scripture we looked at was calculate, which is a mathematical term. All we need to do is take his title and go down through with the Roman numeral equivalent, and we get the numbers at the bottom of each one of those words, add them together, and they equal 666. So it's not very complicated to do once we, once we have the wisdom of what this beast is and who this power represents. So let's go and continue on now and get some more identifying marks of who this beast is. 